Well, hi, baby. Happy Monday. Happy Monday. Happy Father's Day. Monday, October 11th. Today you are exactly 18 months old. One and a half years old. That's amazing. Where time goes. Um, today is also known as Columbus Day. Columbus Day. This is the day... Uh, according to uh, records that indicated that Christopher Columbus, October 11th, um, Christopher Columbus, 1492, actually it would have been 1493, uh, was the day he landed in the New World. He landed in the New World on October 11th, 1493, and that's the day, uh, supposedly, as we go by this year, that he uh, discovered the New World. And that's important. It's important for uh, many reasons. It's important because to the Europeans, to the European world, to the Western world, which is what most of our history now is based on, our calendar, our Gregorian calendar, our time, our metric and measuring system, sort of. Um, all of that is based in most of the wars that have impacted the, uh, the world been based here in the Western world, the European world, and Christopher Columbus was effectively the, wor the first official, official discoverer of the New World. Don't let anybody ever tell you something different. He was ordained, he was paid for and hired by the um, Spanish crown. He was basically a contractor. Columbus himself was Italian. He was born in Genoa. And, um, but he was hired by the Spanish crown to uh, effectively find a new path, overseas path, to the spice trades in India. And he took his famous ships. I hope you learn about these in school. It was the, uh, the Pinta, the Nina, and the Santa Maria, three Famous ships, very well-built well ships, very challenging coming across the Atlantic Ocean in the 14 and 1500s. Marco Polo had done it shortly before him, and many others had sailed the seas. But Columbus was the first official discoverer of the New World. Now there's a lot of things and a lot of messages and a lot of stories and a lot of web pages and a lot of videos and a lot of writers and a lot of speakers, and a lot of politicians, and a lot of activists, isn't everybody an activist today, who will try to tell you that Columbus wasn't the first person to discover the New World. And in fact, they're right. Uh, the Vikings did it in the 900s. The Koreans, they believe, did it maybe 20,000 years ago. The Chinese, they think, did it about 80 years before Columbus. And um, uh, we mentioned the Vikings. And so it's very possible that, in fact, many peoples traveled to the New World before Columbus. But it does not change the fact that he was the first official, commercial, royal discoverer of the New World. And that was important because the Vikings did not open up regular commercial trade routes to the New and Old Worlds. The English never opened up official trade routes. They were not the first to open up trade routes to the Western Old World and the, the Western New World. The Chinese did not, and they were big on trade all over the Pacific Ocean, in fact, for jade, for Iroquois, for rubies, for all kinds of jewels and spices. The, the, giant, the Chinese were amazing, amazing seafaring discoverers, but they didn't even open up true commercial trade between the new continent and the old continents. The Vikings didn't, the Koreans didn't, the Chinese didn't. The Spanish crown did. Through their contractor, their Italian sailor, Christopher Columbus. Now, let's talk a little bit about what Christopher Columbus did when he arrived in the New World. Well, Many people will write and say and make videos and artistry and write books and everything else about how he came to conquer and he came and destroyed the New World. 
That wasn't necessarily the case either. He came to trade. The problem is, is the indigenous peoples, the peoples that already lived here and in the Caribbean and in Haiti and other places that Christopher Columbus landed, um, didn't understand that. And they thought he was here, in fact, as a god or as the devil. And so war quickly ensued, battle, fighting. But Christopher Columbus was just a mechanism. He was just a vessel. He wasn't the instigator of a lot of the fighting and destruction that would come. Anytime two continents and two peoples who were previously have not had contact begin suddenly to have contact, usually there's a lot of bad things that happen. Disease is spread. We know, in fact, that the disease was spread. Smallpox killed more Indians, Native Americans, on this continent, the North and the South American continent, than all bullets and all arrows combined. So much so, in fact, that some of the conquistadors learned that if they could infect clothing or blankets or other wares with smallpox, that they could wage biological warfare on their enemies. So, any premise that, that Christopher Columbus showed up in the New World with guns drawn and spears ready and swords bloodied just isn't correct. There's always going to be fighting over new resources. The explorers usually are going to have better technology and be better, better equipped eventually to build forts and to sustain battle, even on someone's homeland, because they have, they just merely have the technology to cross the ocean. So by its very nature, they're able to have higher and more developed types of technology. And then, of course, you have the fact that you have an intruder. And so you're going to have serious fights between those two peoples. And then you also have the fact that the two peoples don't have the same diets, and don't have the same immune system, don't have the same customs and mannerisms and protections, family structure and religious structure, the same language and communication abilities. It's a perfect setup for conflict and death. So again, to paint Christopher Columbus as an evil warfaring war god that was sent from the Western world to the New World in order to enslave them is a horrible lie. It's a horrible, perverted lie that's being told about Christopher Columbus today. And you can look at it, you can look it up, and you can search it. There are people tearing down his statue, painting and urinating on and burning his picture and his painting. Anything they can do to change the name and change what he did and to ruin everything that he did that was unique in that time. Not perfect, but unique. And it's important that people understand that. Christopher Columbus was the first great explorer who both had the means and the ability and the authorization and the authentication by the crown to have traveled across the Atlantic Ocean and to have confronted the New World and then had the ability to return to, in effect, open up commercial royal trade routes. Regular trips to the New World. No one had done it before him. Um, the fate of the Native American and the indigenous peoples wasn't a good one. But when two peoples come together in this world again that normally or previously had not been together, one is usually overwhelmed and eventually erased. The sands of time eventually, eventually overtake everyone. Everyone is eventually overtaken by another people. Always. The Irish, the Spanish, the English, the Africans, the South Koreans, the Chinese, the Tibetans, the South Africans, the Hutus, the Tutsis, the Australian Aborigines, the American Native, indigenous Native American. Everyone is eventually 
always overtaken by a new people. Always. That's world history. Just because we take a snapshot of it, a small picture of it, and say, this isn't good, doesn't necessarily make it uncommon or unnatural. Christopher Columbus. What a interesting part of history that we don't teach anymore, and when we do, we often pervert it. The sands of time can erase everyone, and it can erase the stories, the true stories that were and the way they should be told. He wasn't a perfect man. He certainly brought death and destruction to the new world, but he brought a connection between the two worlds. The first one that had ever done it, and he did that very, very well. I hope that the sands of time eventually lead us to be able to share stories like this and for us to reflect and learn about and uh, talk about our world and our world history. Happy Father's Day. Happy Columbus Day. October 11th, 2021. I'm thinking of you.